go ahead and apologize to anyone who was watching and who is watching this now that it's on YouTube. My computer crashed and I had to reboot. So yeah, let's get back to it. It was it before I joined you guys. What's up, folks? Hello again. What did I miss? I shoved you through the portal for me to see if you died. Did I win? Uh, you're not oh, dead. Hi. In a strange room. Allow me to read you the description because you missed it. You step out of the mist into an underground chapel with black basalt pillars and a polished obsidian altar. Resting on the altar is a leather bag the size and shape of a human body, and which appears to have been sewn shut. Beyond the altar, a heavy black drape hangs from an archway. Eight emancipated, green-skinned creatures are shackled to the walls of the chapel, each one gazing towards you with a single, baleful eye. The monsters begin to gibber and drool as they shake their manacles, eager to be set free. I just bit my own teeth. Um, and Wongo, uh, as you step through, he sees the bag and he's like, he tells you, you gotta stab that thing. You gotta stab it dead. Yeah, whatever is in there needs to be dead, and you need to stab it to make sure it's dead. All right, all the quicklings are gonna rush over there and try and stab it. Okay, yeah, they stab it successfully. Would Karen well, guess... recognize any of this because she is a cleric of the god of death? Uh, Kalem four, if it's being that specific, because she's elvish. But let me guess, rain's in the bag. <laughs> what's in the box? Uh, do you check what's in the bag? No, the quicklings are stabbing it first. Okay, quickly stab it. There's definitely something that was alive in there because it struggles, and then it stops struggling. Good job. I just did something bad, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Way to Wongo it. Theron's tired. Right. Wongo's only st steered him wrong a couple times. Uh, this appears to be a chapel. Uh, you don't really... Give me an arcana... Uh, religion check, rather. Uh, okay. Karen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's nothing pleasant about any of the iconography, uh, but you're not sure the exact uh, nature of this chapel. Hey, uh, Ken. Mm -hmm. Mandrit has a potion of vitality on his uh, sheet, but it's mm -hmm. listed as other boon one use. Do you remember what that was from? I believe you got that way back at the heart, because you traced the pattern. Okay. Mandrid gives the potion of vitality to Eve. No, it's a char it's a charm. He can't pass it. Oh, okay. That's what I was asking about. Whether it was like a, a thing that was specific to Mandrid or whether it was an actual potion. Sorry. It is a th it is a thing specific to Mandrid, I believe. Well that doesn't fucking help me. Alright, back to whatever the murder duo is doing. Like a, Can yeah, I make an arcana check about this whole situation? Yeah. Uh, Nothics are like desecrated wizards or something, right? Uh, give me an arcana check. We'll see what you know. Does anybody speak undercommon? Not this character. Uh, I don't think so, actually. I don't. Um, I do not think I do either. I just roll a 26 with disadvantage. I speak abyssal, but not under, and goblin, but not under a common. Oh, skill checks aren't at disadvantage. Neat. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you you know what I'm not because they are wizards who have, like, the, who got into knowledge that they shouldn't have, and they were not mentally is tough enough to deal with it, and they are corrupted. Um, Do I feel like they're outright evil? Like, if I let it go, it would murder me instead of being selfish and going, I'm free, protect myself. Uh, you think they are evil, but they're still intelligent, so as long as you're not... Like, if you think you can probably right. deal with it, if you can communicate with it. Uh, however, you do not understand anything that they're saying. 
Okay, I'm gonna do my best performance check to kind of motion like removing of the manacles and then and like motion away. Like if I free you, you go away. Uh, give me a performance check. Uh, it nods at you slowly once. Okay. Uh, Eve kind of elbows Mandred and says, I'm going to let this one go. Be ready in case it gets squirrely. And uh, the the manacles, what am I looking at? Do they need to be lockpicked? Do I see a key anywhere? Is there some way I can open them? Uh, I mean, there is no, there is a key hole. You could try and lockpick it if you like, or you could try and break it with a weapon of some sort. Okay, uh, I'll have Mandred try to break the manacle off of the column, I guess. Or they're like chained to the wall. Chained to the wall. Okay. Karen's just looking at you and being like, but but why? I want to try something. And so Mandred's going to try to free this one. Let me know what I need to do. Okay. Uh, without He has time. So if you take a few minutes to whack it with a, a sword, you can free the uh, creatures. Uh, and they will come down and they'll kind of scurry across the floor. Uh, they don't go anywhere, but they're not attacking you. They just kind of scutter around. But they don't leave the room? No. Okay. Well, one of them goes up to the bag and starts to like kind of poke at it and like, kind of look at the blood that's pouring out of the the uh, burlap. Yeah, Theron's going to go around to the opposite side of where the Nothic is and uh, get one of the quicklings to cut open the bag. All right. Uh, so you uh, cut open the bag. Uh, and as you look inside of it, it what comes out is a uh, human figure. Try and remember if you've met this person. Give us a description and let us figure it out. Uh, he is a handsome man. Uh, Fairly, uh, looks to be fairly tall, short hair, kind of a beard. Uh, his age, he's definitely like uh, in his adult years, but it's kind of hard to tell exactly how old. Like, somebody, he's got a little bit of a gray, but he's still very well put together. This isn't the guy that was with that uh, weird smelling dragonborn guy, right? Yes, it, yes, it was. Yeah, Theron remembers the guy and wanted his ring. Uh, Is he crap. still wearing the ring? It was the guy from Storm King's Thunder. The the one that all the shards were pointing to. Yep. Sin, Simber? Cinder? Um, yeah. Uh, Art, Artic. Art, Artis Simber, yes. Artis. Yeah, Theron would, if he noticed, he would go straight for the ring. Okay. Uh, there, there is no ring on his finger. Theron is very upset. So we totally killed Artist Simber. Hmm. You did. Oops. I don't know what this we shit is. He killed Artist Simber, and Eve points across to Theron. <laughs> Theron's going to look at him and just kind of narrow his eyes and cut off one of his fingers. The ring and finger? put it in the sack. Yes, the ring finger. And put it in the sack with the rest of the stuff. Eve is going to say, I am becoming increasingly disturbed at the amount of people collecting hands and fingers around here. All right, Theron's going to look at Eve and say, look, we just destroyed the soul monger, so that means that we can bring people back to life now. As long as I have some sort of remnant of you or anyone who has died recently, we can bring them back, assuming that we make it out of here alive. Hmm. So it's not that big of a deal. Besides, he didn't have the ring anyways. Eve doesn't know about the ring. Yeah, he's not going to tell Eve about the ring. <laughs> okay, so we have a small army of gibbering things scattering around with us and not but a dead body and a strange curtain. So, curtain? When, when, the, when, the, when the hand's out of, like, you guys have the body, it's kind of like hanging out at the altar now. 
Uh, one of the Nothics comes over and starts gnawing on the arm. Nah, 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 nah. So is this um like curtain strange anyway? No, just a curtain. Because last time I saw a guy that go through a curtain in the basement of a very creepy building, it was the curtain between life and death, and he died. I still miss you, Sirius Black. Mm. Those books suck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more veg pygmies to for the day, do I? I believe uh, you. I believe you have sacrificed your veg pygmy for the day. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to sacrifice a quickling yet. I don't have anything to be able to talk to these people. I'm going to click Karen a spell real quick to, uh, just so I can move read the it. curtain aside with her mage hand. Yeah, Theron's jumping out of the way and getting, or getting over here. Okay. Uh, what's that spell do there for you? I just didn't want to read it in a tiny box. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just trying to read it here too. Yeah, I'm not using it. Okay, it does not allow you to tra it's, uh, you can see, but it's yeah. yeah. It also takes 10 minutes to cast. I got time. Okay. Bitch and you also, need a, you also need a focus worth at least 100 gold. Either a jeweled horn for hearing or a glass eye for seeing. Yep. You know, I guess you do have those eyes. I'd say those eyes are worth 100 gold. <laughs> yeah, we literally have a rack of, like, crystal eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, actually, no, you left those no, in the door. No, we stuck the... them in a door. Oh, yeah, the door. On the other side of the window, there's a beholder waiting for you. No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> Well, you got, also, just a reminder, you guys do no longer have your 50 temporary hit points. Okay. okay. The temporary hit points fade away? Yeah, because you're... Like normal you, temporary hit you, points? No, because they're only there for helping us, for helping you beat a Serac. Because okay. otherwise, okay. I just want to cast a uh, uh, power word kill on one of you and fucking oh, yeah. wasted the whole party. Disintegrated a bunch of you. I was um, just saying, like, I didn't realize they went away because most of them don't go away until a long rest. Yes, no, they do go away. Uh, behind the curtain is a 10-foot wide, 45-foot long hallway set with four decorative archways that have blank walls within them. Uh, three paths marked out in red, gold, and purple tiles snake along the floor, each leading to one of the three archways. A charred skeleton on the floor points at the fourth archway, which has no path leading to it. A single torch burns in a wall sconce at the far end of the hall. Eve huh. asks... Moa in her head. Moa, do you know which of these paths we should follow? Uh, Moa does not know. Uh, does anyone have Iljin or Sagambi? Uh, I forget which one Mandard has. I have to go look at the notebook. I forget what mine's called. I just call it the Drop Bear. Okay, no. Oh. Neither one of those. Obalaka. Yeah. No. Darren's going to suggest taking the gold path. Uh... Eve asked the floating skull that I totally forgot about which path to take. Oh, that's right. I totally, I totally meant to fucking power... I forgot I was going to do that. I was going to make a joke of it and power word kill the... Uh, the fool. The skull, yeah. So did Asher do that then? <laughs> no, no. I didn't do it. Because it would have taken <laughs> it was a turn. smart enough to hide in front of Asherak. Yep. Yeah. Like, ha ah, ha ah. uh, I mean... Sorry, uh, for the record, Mandred has Nang Nang and Karen has Obalaka. Gotcha. Okay, so none of them, none of the ones that are uh, useful. Huh? Ah, the uh, skeleton. Uh, he looks like he had a good time. You should try that one. Huh? Karen's like, mm. I can't believe I agreed with the fucking skull. Like, <laughs> that's so what the, I was leaning toward. The skeleton's like, Actively pointing like a, a dead person saying, go this way. Uh, this charred skeleton on the floor points to the fourth archway, which has no path leading to it. Um, so, yeah. That one. I, I, as a person, do not remember how many people of the yellow banner that we have found, but was there one of them missing still? Uh, no, you've, I, you have found all. Okay. Um, Theron, does your your uh, lizard friend know anything about this? 
Or has he not been down here? Yeah, I'll ask the the lizard and my uh, um, ghost lantern. My, lantern, my ghost, ghost lantern, whose name I can't remember the name. Okay, star lantern. fallen. Yeah, star star, uh, star star fallen is a gas that you killed artist Simber. She's not talking to you. Um, the lizard. <laughs> uh, the lizard comes out of your bag gnawing on artist's finger, uh, and he is, says, "Motherfucker, I never came down this far. I, I stayed where I was because I was safe up there. There weren't." Like, you motherfuckers come down here, you start stabbing shit. Like, thank you for the finger, by the way. Uh, and you're fighting, like, ancient monsters and beasts, and I just want to get out of here and get back to my jungle. God damn it. Druidic, I can say, you and me both, buddy. You and me both. Uh, he goes back in the bag and keeps an on the finger. And I'm going to give uh, Starfall in the same little spiel about how I can always bring him back. It's Wait. I can always bring him back as long as I have something, and then realize that uh, the lizard is chewing on the finger and rest away. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to catch that. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Eve asked Karen if we should try to fly down the hallway instead of following one of the paths. Karen's going to shrug and be like, I don't know. The door I was going to pick doesn't have a path, but now that the skull said to pick that door. Nope, fuck it. Not second guessing myself. I vote for skeleton door. Yeah, that's the nature of my question, I guess. Um, do you think we should follow the purple path until we get there, or should we fly and not touch any path? Oh, um, I'm not sure if that actually... That, I didn't think of that part. Uh, Theron's going to ask Wongo, does he know anything? Wongo does... Uh, Wongo uh, thinks that paths are dumb, so you should probably go to the secret door to the uh, skeleton door he said it's a secret door guys go yes that's exactly what I said clearly I wasn't confused by the uh, by the S words <laughs> Darren's going to say well Wongo says we should go that way but I still think we should follow the gold path well we come to the skeleton door before the gold path so So I guess to the gold path to the skeleton door, I guess. Mandred is going to start following the gold path. So stop me if anything happens. Okay, no, nothing happens. He's going to walk to the skeleton and then kind of staying on the path. I want to give the skeleton a look over. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, does it have any right. armor or clothing or marks or anything I can gain, or is it just a super ancient, nothing alive on its skeleton? It looks like it's been scorched black by fire. Can I... Are, is there any burning on the floor or anything that would be indicative of where the fire came from? Like, did he get burned nope. here? The uh, camp tell. Okay. Uh, staying feet on the gold path, Mandrid looks in the archway. Is it just a smooth wall? Uh, you can give me a perception check if you like, or investigation, your choice. Wrong character sheet. Uh, there does appear to be a secret door there. Uh, staying feet on the gold path, I'm going to use my staff and try to push the door open. Okay. You push the door open. When you do so, I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Great. 23. Do you not still have disadvantage? That's Eve. Oh, this is Mando. Sorry, I was on, I was on the DM layer. Uh, da, 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 so he makes that save, right? DC this is a DC. Yep. Okay. So he does make it. Um. So he's gonna take. Oh boy. It's just a glyph of warding. It's not that bad. Uh, he'll take nine uh, fire damage. Sweet. Actually, no, it's not fire. It's cold. Don't know if it makes a difference, but that's actually mm. set to cold damage. I am now 
out of the temporary hit points from the Jude. From the what? Mandred never actually got hit during either of the air quote boss fights. So he's still at full life and had the Theron's temporary hit points. Uh -huh. <laughs> because he's the melee character and y'all had the like air ballet tentacle fight where I stood back and chucked javelins. This is true. Yeah. And then and then because and he then hit him, I was in a box. He, <laughs> the fucking boss didn't want to deal with the paladin. He just put him in a box. All right. So what do I see? A well. All right. Well, what do you see? Um, a pool of jet black ooze glistens inside a silent chamber, whose walls are decorated with relief carvings depicting black stars. Interesting. Uh, Mandred's going to shout back to the group and say, it's a weird black room full of black ooze and stars. I don't know if this is what killed that guy, but it was worth putting a, a trap on the door, so... And he'll... Karen's like, I have to talk to their decorator. Yeah, he's going to hop off the gold path and try to land into the room without touching the purple path. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, hmm. That divine sense thing doesn't actually help me here, I don't think. Somebody else do something while I read Mandarin abilities. Darren's <laughs> going to walk up and uh, stick his head around the corner. See what's in the this room. Okay. Yeah, you see what I told you? The pool of jet black ooze glistens inside the silent chamber, whose walls are decorated with, with relief carvings depicting black stars. I'm going to click a thing so I can read it as easy. Does Wongo know anything about this? Wongo does not. Does Nang Nang know anything about this? I'll just preempt you. None of the other gods know anything about this. Thank you. Hey, Ken. Mm -hmm. Does my vampire bite ability heal me? It does not, because the vampire bite thing does not heal vampires. I don't think. Really. Huh. Uh, as we start heading down this hallway, what's the reaction from the pile of Nothics? They just ignore you. A couple of them, like, trail back behind. They're like dogs, but they're not mm. paying much mind. Okay, I'm just wanting to make sure we don't, like, as soon as half the party's gone, they're jumping the spellcasters. No. Uh, Eve is you, let going... them, you let them go. They seem, quite, they seem quite happy that you let them go. Okay. Uh, Eve's going to walk down the path. Um, can I make some sort of religion or arc arcana check to see if I know anything about Jet black rooms and stars and altars. With uh, us. give me our contract if you like. Um. Yeah. You don't know. Okay, Mandard, being the hero of the story steps forward and takes the end of his stick and touches the black ooze in the the well or cauldron or whatever this is. And I do the like, you know, you poke something and you lift the stick up to see the viscosity of it or what happens. I, I yep. totally do the testing the black ooze from alien movies. Okay. Yep. So you like he pop pokes it and he pulls out. It kind of sticks up on the on the butt of his spear. Um. And uh, like it sits there bobbing for a second, then it just kind of like goes into smoke. Uh, Matt, you're right. I uh, just read it, uh, but I will say no for the time being. Okie dokie. Mandred kind of turns around to the group, or. Uh, even there and there and says, well, this is weird. Do we want to try other doors or um, other paths, I mean? Darren's going to take his nine foot six inch pole and uh, stick it in the ooze. Does anything happen? 
Stick it like all the way in the ooze. Let's do the same thing he did, except with something that's not magical. Okay, no, yeah, you stick it. In, I mean, if you just like dip it in there and pull it back out, kind of like viscously it snaps back, and then whatever's left, whatever residue is on the staff, just kind of poofs away. You should see how deep it is. Jump in. Uh, Theron's gonna look back at Karen, and uh, just ignore. Her. And he's going to start pushing the uh, the pole. Okay. You push the pole into the ooze, uh, as it like, never seems to find a bottom. And uh, when you like, you get all the way down, you probably pull it back, it is out of your hand and no longer there. Okay. Oh, well. Wow. Is the teleporter. Go, 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 go. Theron's upset he lost his pole. That pole served you well. It it did. I was expecting it to be like a nine foot pole or something, but now it's gone. Looking at it's the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at the stars in this room, do I recognize any constellations or any? Like, I don't necessarily have a great studying of the gods of uh, Ubtal, but are these the stars over the Forgotten Realms, or is it just? I, a random I will start? let one of you give me a investigation check with advantage for the group. All right, well, who's the best at these? Not me, but I'm a druid. I probably looked up at the night sky if you. I have a plus like... one to investigation. Yeah, I've got a plus one to investigation. I, I don't think it matters because we're all at plus one except Mandrick. So I will let Theron have the moment. Well, who does not have disadvantage on ability check? Because well, he I said have... it's, it's he said it's as a group, so it's with advantage. Okay. Yeah, I just want your your dice to roll it. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Seventeen. So, looking at the 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 merles, what you realize the black stars remind you of uh, is the hags had black marbles. Right. Ah. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Who has those? I know I have at least one. I probably took most of them. Are there any spots missing? No. Or do we I have haven't. a set number of marbles that would match the stars on the wall? Oh, there are countless stars on the wall. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't know who have has them, but Theron probably would have taken them if he had the chance. So I, I'm pretty sure you looted at least two of the hags. Yeah, so Theron probably has all of them. Uh, I'll pull them out. Um, do I notice anything? Do you know what those are, Theron? Do I know what they are? Uh, you do not know what they are. When you hold them in your hand, they 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 do seem to shimmer in the same way the ooze shimmers. All right, and how many of these things do I have? I want to say a five. Okay. I mean, says... I'll flip back and make sure. So. Give one to Mandrid and let him be the one to test and throw it into the pool. What do we have to hold them as we go through the, the teleport keys? Uh, give me ten minutes to cast identify. Actually, I have a spell slot. Fuck it, I'll just cast identify. Yeah, you have five marbles. Okay. Does identify do anything? Uh, yes. You've, it's, they're basically keys. You drop one in the portal and it should allow you to leave. Oh. Nice. Oh. Well, I get super excited and Eve is like, this, this is our ticket out of here. Uh, and give one to Mandred and let him throw it in the pool. Okay. okay. I'll do that. Mandred takes one. He looks back and he throws it in the pool. Okay. The room explodes. No. Uh, the... <laughs> The uh, uh, the uh, ooze kind of like bubbles and boils, and it kind of explodes upwards. Uh, and as it explodes upwards in a column, it solidifies into a obelisk. And the obelisk looks like the obelisk out in front of the tomb. Oh, uh, any markings or indication on it? It's marked just like the obelisk outside. That was so long ago. Uh, I touched the obelisk. 
Okay. When you touch it, you are sucked into it. And the rest of you see Mandra disappear. Mandra's in the room of dead bodies. Yeah! Uh, Eve steps forward and touches the obelisk. Okay. <laughs> Disappears. Karen's like, you want me to go or you want you to go, Theron? Uh, ladies first. Karen will also disappear into the obelisk. Okay. Theron's going to think about it for a second. So I'm going to be like, well, my choice is being left here. <laughs> um, could I send the quickling to this door, the gold door? Do it. Yeah, could I send the quick? Could I send? Could I send the quickling to the gold door? See if there's anything in there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just a blank, open wall. You can do an investigation check to see if there's not a secret door if you like. Okay, Theron's not going to do it, but he's going to have to quickly do it. Okay. Yeah, he's probably not going to notice anything. Uh, no, he does not notice anything. Okay, well, I'm going to shrug and. Uh, slowly go to touch it and uh, touch the obelisk thing. Okay. You touch the obelisk, you are sucked in, and you are you reappear outside of the of temple next to the obelisk outside. Uh, there was a secret door behind the gold door uh, with a uh, another glyph of warding. Uh, does anybody <laughs> did any did anyone still have the uh, the eye from or the Remember the little the little eye the little eye necklace you found? Yeah, I have it. If you were wearing that, you would have seen the glyph of warding and not set it off. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, also in there is an arcana loth uh, in a oh, library my. full of magical shit and high powered spell books. What's an arcana loth? Uh, it is a uh, type of uh, what are those neutral evil fiends? A uh, yugoloth. It's a type of yugoloth and. Uh, they have stored knowledge. Huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. They also look like foxes. I think it's some and more of them. They're like high CR, and I wasn't going to have a lot of fun killing you with them. But oh well. Yeah, I would have ran back and touched the thing before it killed me. <laughs> okay. He also, so... also one, of his, one of the items he has on him is a set of uh, glasses. And the glasses are actually a uh, portal key to, uh, to, uh, what's the, to Sigil? What's that? To where? To Sigil, the the, the city that's like the hub of. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Good fun there. Uh, so yeah, you guys come out. Uh, come what out time in the jungle. Is it? We'll say it's noon. Uh, Karen is going to immediately take cover under some trees. Oh, that's right, because you're going to be damaged. Yes. Yes. Uh, and what you're going to see is you're going to see a little gnome woman approach. And say, oh, I see you found my hand. Uh, what hand? Uh, she looks at a Karen and says, the, your hand, silly. Well, my hand. Uh, Theron's going to pull the, Karen's hand out of his pack. This one? No, no, not that one. You guys recognize her, by the way. She's the, the yeah, woman it's, from it's the, the heart. the gnome that cast geese on me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't recognize her. No, you don't recognize her. Um... And uh, you can see that she has. Uh, uh, give me a perception check. All Real quick, do the quicklings come with me, or are they just gone? Uh, they can come with you. Don't need to go to get suckled through, suck through the thing, but they come. Okay. You said perception check. Yes. I'm just checking. I'm doing one, checking one thing real quick. Take your time. Do the are the spirits still in our head now that we've left the tomb? No. And your powers no longer. Nope, they are not. And the magical artifacts they were in still work. They. Uh, you don't know. All right. As soon, I guess as soon as Theron notices, he's gonna 
act, start acting very confused and a bit upset. Notices that, that the spirit no longer not... has. Yeah, no longer has the angry, chaotic evil uh, ape in his head. Yeah, Theron might notice first, because the, the ape was always screeching at you, and it's, all, it's silent. For the first time in days, it's silent. For yeah, Theron's almost going to break down in tears. I'm just so happy, y'all. I'm waiting on progress. Man, yeah, still looks the like gnome right? woman. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I, was, I didn't realize you guys did the perception check, because I was thinking. Uh, Evelyn, you notice, uh, kind of slithering around you, there are some yuan T uh, malisons all around you. Like in the bushes and stuff? Yeah, in the bushes and the shadows. I'm going to do that, guys. We are not alone here. You guys have done, you've all did a very good job, and I'm sure it's very dangerous in there, and I'm sure you've done wonderful things. Yeah, I feel 100% better. I just want that hand. Is this mm. a friend of yours? Oh, these boys! Oh, yes, they're they're so silly. Uh, they said they said you were, they are also waiting for you to bring them something, uh, and I said I didn't mind waiting with you. Uh, they seem to be quite pleasant. Oh, sorry, that was Eve asking the party who this gnome bitch oh, is. Sorry, oh, she's, was... she's the but I'll take that too. Map. Oh yeah, she did steal our map too. I forgot about that part. So don't give it a hand, but you can give her the finger. Well, I've got one of those, too. Ooh, I've got a spare one now. She says, holding up a hand with six fingers. Yeah, I already tried giving her your other hand. Yeah, it she doesn't work. want that one. Uh, I have... I'm sorry, I, I just can't turn it over. As you can see, I've become rather attached to it. <laughs> she says, she kind of stomps her little gnome foot. Uh, she blows her hair back, and the rest of you see what uh, Karen saw once before. Uh, one of her eyes is a normal eye. The other one is like sunken and just like a red orb. Uh, that almost looks like a, uh, a multifaceted insect eye. Uh, and she says, well, Drat, well, how about this? Why don't you and I team up? We destroy these fools, take the crown from the UNT, and go uh, have some adventures together. Do I recognize this eye? Uh, give me an Arcana check. Man, I suck at yep. all of my Arcanas. That's the whole uh, point of this character. It's not good. You can you can feel uh, power radiating off of it, but beyond that, you're not sure. Does the hand respond to the eye in any way? Uh, it kind of feels both drawn and it's, it feels drawn to it. Like you, 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 you've always kind of liked this little gnome chick, uh, but now you feel drawn to her. Well, I liked her at first, and then she cast geese on me. I liked her less after that. And she stole our map. Yeah, but you liked her less after that. But you liked her less, like in the way that, like you, uh, uh, like a little kid likes the the girl he likes on the playground less after she pulls her hair, but really you still like <laughs> each other. Uh, Karen. So the black skull necklace allows undead people to teleport, right? That's what the effect was. Or it allows anyone to teleport, but if a non-undead person tries to use it, it fucks them up. I apologize. What necklace? The black skull necklace. The one from the, like, guy who... That we just got, yeah. The one that would have allowed me to see that glyph of warding. Didn't it have, like, a teleport on it or something? No, no, no. That, that I'm talking about the. Uh, there was a pendant when, it, when you first were trying to get in the tomb. You had to use the pendant to like see the secret hidden thing with the. Oh no! Yeah, not the necklace I had. I had the black skull necklace. The black allowed, skull necklace you know, is yeah. from that's the, a, that's the, the builder boss guy. Oh uh, yeah. Whatever his name was. In the room with all the running around, skittering dead hands. He. Oh had right, right, right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that actually, do, all that does is that lets you have the. Uh, remember the, uh, the t the like the vis the viewing portal that the yeah that we looked armor... in and the thing jumped out. Right. If you have that uh, skull necklace, you can look through it and see and not be attacked. Aha. Uh -huh. Huh. 
I thought it allowed me to teleport for some reason. No. Hmm. Hmm. No, let me, let, me make, let me make sure I'm not forgetting something, but I don't believe so. But let me confirm. I would hate to tell you incorrect information twice in a session. I don't remember anything about teleporting, but I may have been disregarding any talk of teleporting once we knew that teleporting didn't work. I thought I remembered, like, getting a teleport opportunity, but then it being like, unless you're undead or evil, it tries to do this to you. And it was, like, while I was still half-elf, not vampire. Mm. My roommate's making some dinner and it smells good. I'm guessing I don't have the material components for teleportation circle. Uh, what are the material components? Rare chalks and ink with precious gems. Uh, fifty gold piece. Probably not. Also, you probably need to take. It probably takes like what a minute to cast. Yeah, I'm okay. saying in general, not. I'm gonna cast this mid combat to get away from this chick. Gotcha. I'm looking at a Chult escape plan because I, yeah. Gotcha. You again, Matt. You are correct. I apologize. You do. You can teleport to a position within with location within a hundred feet of you. Cool. And is that at will or like once per? How does that work? Uh, it is. I never tried to use it when it I has, got it. It has I six. Didn't. It has six charges. It just takes one charge to teleport yourself. Uh, it regains D six uh, charge at dawn. Okay, because that's how I'm gonna have to like move through the shadows, basically. Uh, uh, she holds out her hand in a very uh, Darth Vader manner, except uh, you know she's tiny, and she says, "Join me, and we can rule the multiverse." Karen's gonna be like, "Oh, I think we're good at the snake people. We got them their crown. I don't think it's magical." <laughs> I think what Theron has it, right? Probably. Yeah. We can just give them their thing. And then we can sit down and have a more civilized discussion about my hand. Eve is purposely separating herself from this conversation. Yeah, Theron is going to pull out the crown and hand it over to Mandrid because he trusts Mandrid at this point more than himself. Oh, right. I have two characters. Mandrid <laughs> is ready to throw down. Mandrid is ready to beat this gnome's ass. Well, Mandrid does not like this gnome, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Mandrid is, like, wondering why we are not fucking fighting this asshole already. Yeah, Theron's there too, but they're Yanti around. Oh, Karen um, is fully not intending to take this girl's offer because she doesn't trust her. Not because right. she wouldn't enjoy beating everybody up and running away with the crown, but she just doesn't trust the gnome anymore. Help paint the picture for me, Ken. Uh, we have the gnome right in front of us in the like clearing oh. area, and the Yonti are back hiding in the bushes. Do they seem allied with each other, or are the Yonti kind of just watching to see what happens? Uh, and is there any sort of Yonti give, leader? Give me an insight check. Eighteen. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there does appear to be a uh, figure uh, with some bandages still wrapped around his body. Ew. Uh, ballpark it. Where is he in relation to Mandred and uh, Nim? Uh, let's go ahead and make a map real quick. Okay. I thought we were gonna have we were gonna guys we were gonna explore and find the library, so I didn't have this all set up. Hold on a second. I tried. <laughs> it's all right. I had no idea the the gold door led somewhere, but it was gold, so I expected it to lead somewhere. Yeah, to a super high level demon that he wanted to kill us with. Well, I mean there was gold behind it. Might have been worth it. It's also the most ridiculous enemy ever. It has like such a wide variety of like difficulty depending on how often it gets its uh, ability. What? 
the Yugoloth attempts a magical summoning, it has a 40% chance of summoning a second Arcanoloth. So basically, like, if you get that ability to work on several in a row, you can have like five of them. Or it can fail the first time, and there can be one. All right. So you guys come out, and you're surrounding the obelisk <laughs> here. This is an awesome enemy. I like this one. Roll 20 is lagging. Yeah, it's running slow. Karen has dashed underneath the tree. Right. Mrs. Dash. You're right back. Okay. You might as well take a quick uh, five minutes if you need to. Okay. Probably if I put this on the right layer, wouldn't it? Oh, it's so cute. Isn't it just so precious? Yeah. I mean, sure, it's going to murder the multiverse and I have Vecna everybody, but it's so cute. Did she <laughs> use that token for the campaign? No, no, no. I just randomly grabbed one real quick. Okay. Hers is hers was very uh punk rock. It was honestly more of like a shadow run token, I thought, but it was yeah. it was fitting. It was fitting for her and the character. Yeah, I it might be the same token that I made for the character. I think it was. Sitting on like a stack of books or something. Uh might have been she had like a wrench in her hand. Yeah, I think Karen was sitting on a stack of books reading that book before it got cropped down. All right. <laughs> so everybody back? I know. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll just sit away for a second. I know. I didn't hear you come back. So you guys, this is what you guys see. Uh, We'll say that Eve is able to point it out to you. They, you guys have company. So you have a couple of Yanti. Uh, you have Ross Nisi kind of hiding out in the shadows, uh, slithering towards you. And you have the little gnome, just like she's talking to Karen. Ross Nisi calls out, give me the crown. Mandred has the crown. Uh, and he's fairly certain that he can get it to Ross Nisi before the gnome interrupts and attempts to do so. Uh, do you walk over, do you like walk it to him or do you try to throw it? Uh, I'm assuming Ross Nisi is looking at Mandred since he has the crown. So he takes like the half a step and does the like light chuck to Ross Nisi. Like, but I want to, I would not throw it if Ross Nisi was not like paying attention to me, basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if you kind of like do a like whistle and woo -hoo sort of thing. Uh, Ross needs he will pay attention and he will go to chuck it. He, he will gesture for you to toss it to him. Um, and the gnome says, "Remember, uh, my boy, uh, you said that uh, we agreed that we had to get both items or they would die." Uh, and Ross needs kind of snarls over and says, "I don't, I don't care about your hand. What is?" Your eye is not important. All that matters uh, is the end of all things. Uh, and the gnome says, oh, that's so boring. Does Ross Nisi now have the crown? Or did he... Do you, do you, ta do you toss it over to him? I was going to say, did that conversation interrupt me chucking it? Uh, I mean, it, it uh, would have drawn Ross Nisi's attention for a moment. So you probably would have, okay, if you would have yeah. chucked, it would have fallen on the ground. I want to get an insight kind of read on Ross Nisi as to whether he's got a moment of pause on this or whether he's still very much like, give me the fucking crown, fuck all this noise. Okay. That is the wrong character sheet. Okay. Uh, I mean, he seems to mostly just care about the crown. Um, uh, he a little. He has a little bit of frustration, but uh, you know he's he's dealt honestly with you thus far. 
Okay. Uh, you know, he, only, he, only, he only killed your, your kitty. I was about to say, so Manor's going to chuck him the crown and be like, so should we discuss our hat rack or is that not even, or discuss your hat rack or is that not even on the table? Uh, he holds the crown in his hand uh, and he goes to put it on. As he does, the uh, sky darkens for a moment. But when you look up, there's just a cloud that passes over the sun. Um, and uh, he turns and says, uh, the statue is at the entrance of the city. Uh, and he, sc- and he, scroll- he as he slithers away, he shouts back over his shoulder, uh, something in yuan Ti in Abyssal. Do anybody speak Abyssal? Yeah, yeah Karen does. Abyssal. Okay. You hear him just shout to his, to his Yanti handlers, kill them all, uh, as he slid his way. And uh, Nim goes, well, shoot. I guess I guess that's what it is. And I guess we need to roll initiative. Yay. Yay. I literally don't think the Yanti can hurt Karen. <laughs> that was the wrong token. I don't even care about the Yanti. I just want to kill the gnome for stealing our map. Hey, so hypothetically, if you had two effects and one of them made you vulnerable to a certain type of damage and the other one made you resistant to it, they would cancel out, right? Why is it not letting me click my token? What's going on here? I don't know. Roll Tony is being weird. It's letting me click everything else. Um, there we go. Oh, for some reason, it thinks my token is in the spot next to where my token really is. That's okay. I need to refresh my stuff. It's all fucking up now. Yeah, it's not just you. It's... Archmage. Yes, and? Uh, naming off things. Doing stuff. All right. I think um. Oh, the sheet All right. I can click on my character sheet now, or on my character icon. All right, in there. Yes, you are. Karen, you are up first. All right. Uh, Nim looks over at you and says, we could be very powerful together. We do not need to destroy each other. We could just destroy all of them. Um, Karen will nod slightly and then call back to Rosnisi, also in Abyssal, and be like, hey, douchebag, and then shoot a bunch of Eldritch Blasts at him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. making it very clear she understood what he said to his like guardy people uh-huh. and then shooting at him okay come on Karen step it up there we go alright so the last one hits uh, and he will turn back to you and say an abyssal well that uh, well, that was just rude. And now I gotta roll him into initiative. Mm. Oh, good. He didn't get skipped. How uh, how high would you say the cliffs around us are? Oh, they're quite high. Okay. I don't actually remember where the entrance to the tomb was, so I didn't know if it was the full like cliffs around Uptel. Yeah, it's, it's they're they're going into the cliff. The cliff's like a hundred feet high. Okay. Uh, with that, Ross Nisi, who is also a wizard, first thing he does, he pulls out his sword and he clicks it on, and it's a flame tongue long sword. Hmm. Neat. Does it make a click or like a lightsaber whoosh? A click. And then he will try and polymorph. Karen. So, Karen, I need a wisdom saving throw. 
Okie dokie. Uh, his spell DC is 16. Okay. And he will close that distance. And he shouts at him, uh, I don't care about, you know, you can have the hand after I cut it off her body, off her corpse. Uh, Yon T number one will come forward and smickety smack at Eve. 18. Thank you. All right. The downside is she hit you with a scimitar. The plus side is she missed you with the sword. Uh, I'm sorry, she missed you with the bite, rather. But you take eight slashing damage from the scimitar. Fucker. Uh, Nim is going to cast Globe of Invulnerability around herself, so she's safe. You said eight? Eight, yes. Uh, Mandrid will block the uh, sword attack from this one, but it'll take the bite damage, so 7 piercing, 10 poison for Mandrid. And it is Mandrid's turn. Aren't you guys glad that Karen got you into another fight? Like, hasn't been this been so much fun? Uh, as long as we can take out the note. <laughs> is it Still upset about cast? the map. Is it too late to cast Hellish Rebuke? No. I'm going to burn a first level spell slot to Hellish Rebuke the guy that attacked Eve. Okay. Yeah, he takes that damage. That's good damage. Uh, since I did fire damage, I would like to surround myself in flames. Okay. Doesn't affect this turn, but yeah. Cool. Uh, shield Bash Longsword. Menagerie from that one guy that does that thing every time. Uh, right. Oh yeah, Radiant because I'm level 11. Yep. So you knock it prone, so you have an advantage of both of those hit. 20, 32. Christ, he bloodies it in one hit. Fucking paladins, man. That's uh, Mandrid's turn. Actually, he'll scooch here. Okay. That's no, his turn. Oh, why did you do that? <laughs> now you're in the circle. Why are you in the circle? There's a whole map south of us. Fucking drop shit down there. Yeah, but I could have gotten three guys. <laughs> He's fucking almost dead. <laughs> Theron. All right. Um, let's see. Theron was going to send the quicklings after Gnome here, but she's under that global invulnerability. Uh, is Ross Nisi, uh Is he up there against Karen, or is he just still right, right where he's at? He's right where he's at. That's as far as he could get. Okay. Um, he's going to send... Uh, the two quicklings after this guy here. Okay. And my cat just stood right in front of where I need to click. Hold on. Good kitty. Anyways. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So I guess the first one's going to attack it, but if it if it dies, it's not enough to kill it. All six of them. Uh, well, the first one hits it three times. The second one hits it uh, twice. Let's see, seven and eight is fifteen. Twenty-four. Uh, Thirty-two. No, you, you would need all you would need all uh, five hits to kill it. Okay. So I guess all of them are going to hit hit okay. that one. So the quickly is just like. Dogpile this UNT and eventually stab it into a submission. And Theron is going to pull out his Mace of Terror. He's been holding this entire time and finally. So it's a DC 
15 wisdom save um, or oh, each creature of your choice. Yeah. yeah, it's each creature of your choice within a 30 yard radius. So that should be all the. Okay, so Ross Nisi, Nim, and the Yuan T? Yep. All right. All right, so Ross Nisi has advantage. Is it wisdom save? Yep, DC 15. All right. That magical item does still work. Awesome. Ross Nisi crit. Not awesome. But I don't care about him. I don't know if I actually have the information for Moa's staff. Oh, Theron's got a lot of good stuff. Yeah, but I don't think I actually have the information oh. for the weapon. Not that it uh. should matter, but... All right, so all three of them had advantage because they're all magic resistant. Okay. The only one that failed was the gnome. Yay! Right. That's good. So she that... stomps and says, that was rude, and she tops her foot and turns her back to you. Okay. Eve. Uh, this asshole is attacking me. I would like to... Uh, actually, let me read this thing real quick. would end at the end of my next turn. Uh, I'm on a Sacred Flame, then. Okay. Now, uh, Sacred Flame is Radiant, not Fire. Yep. Uh, okay. However, I do not have disadvantage when using <laughs> uh, Sacred Flame, because it lets them true. roll, not me. So, yes, I will lose my Fire, uh, but I will take my chances. Okay. And that's no damage on a save, right? Right. Cantrip. Okay. Yep, cantrip. So he dodges out of the way like a snake. Sure. I scooch over into the bushes. Okay. Karen. Okay, so somebody had mentioned like a damage shield of some sort? Yes. Uh, the wizard, Nim, cast Globe of, Globe of Vulnerability. All right. Upon becoming feared, does that go away because she loses concentration, or how does that work? It does not it may have any effect on that. All right. Will she have to, will she have to move out of it? So no, she should. has to run away. Does it say you have to run away? It's, it's with a 10 foot radius around you and remains for the duration. Uh, it says, while it is frightened in this way, a creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can. Right, but the globe and vulnerability is centered on the creature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so she's running away, but she'll still be within the globe and vulnerability. Okay. <laughs> He's saying it's not a thing placed on the ground. It's right. A, oh, okay. It's she's in a hamster ball. Right. And global vulnerability just does what it says it does. Oh, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. Global, it says global vulnerability is immobile. Hmm? Hmm. Oh, that's true. Immobile finish. Yeah, Sorry, I guess I shouldn't be looking up spells for that's all right that's all right i've never used this spell before one second i want to go read it now all the cool kids are doing it an immobile faintly shimmering barrier so if i walk inside the barrier can i cast spells on them hold on how does this work <laughs> i would say yes yeah would that Oh yeah, it actually specifically well, says in the spell text. Would that uh this is a magic item. I guess it would be lower than fifth level. Would that get around the uh um That's true, it is casting fear, isn't it? So yeah, it wouldn't affect her. Okay. Yeah. I didn't Very know good. since it wasn't technically a spell, but But it's it's using it's using it's a it, the magic item cast spell for Gotcha. So yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. So Karen. Uh, Karen is going to look at what her spell save DC is. Is going to cast Finger of Death on the gnome. Okay. Uh, my spell save DC is 17. 17, all right. 
That's a con save, I think. Yep. Now, now be nice. Should have cast spike growth on her. Okay, that does hit. I don't have a spike growth anymore. Jesus! Yay! <laughs> You're just See, at you, I, kid. I roll super high damage spells, and they fucking don't. I roll a bunch of ones. You roll a high damage, a medium. Like, finger that's actually kind of underwhelming. And you fucking do how much damage? God damn it! All right, whatever. She's gonna have a very difficult time can maintaining concentration on her. No, she she dropped <laughs> concentration. <laughs> finger guns. All right. Uh, Ross Nisi is going to keep charging forward. He's going to smack you a few times with his uh, Flame Tom sword. Okay. Excuse me. Bless Actually, that's not true. Um, first thing he's going to do is he's going to try and constrict you with his snake tail. Okay. What's your AC? It's 18? 19. 19? All right, he missed you. He rolled an 18. But he hits you twice with the sword. Luckily for you, it didn't constrict you because that restrains you, so you would have advantage when it crits you. Right. Uh, what um, type of sword damages his sword? Uh, it is. Shade okay. Uh, it is magical. Uh, so you take 18 slashing and you take 8 fire. Jesus, I rolled low on that. So I rolled two. I rolled 46 with a fire damage and a total of 7. All right. So 16 is enough. Doesn't have yeah, 16 is his AC. So you do 15 damage. So you do 15, but you take what I say. 18 it was, plus know, eight. It was 20 something. 18, 18 plus, eight plus 8 is 26. 26. Yeah. I was like, I already did the calculation and took it off my health. I don't remember what I had before. Okay. Uh, the remaining one, T, will uh, continue smacking at. Uh, so again, you avoid the bite, but you take eight slashing damage from the scimitar, Eve. Got it. And Nim says, oh, look at the time. It's time to go. And she casts teleport. Bitch. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm very upset. Next turn, Karen is going to cast synaptic synapse on both Rosnisi and Nim. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mandrid. Sorry. Mandrid is going to rush Ross Nisi, I guess, and start attacking him since we're doing this now. Smiting on the second one. Okay. Uh, is he's undead? Question mark. Uh, he is not undead. Okay. He was affected he's by the curse. Changed. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's revived. Right. Fuck. Right, don't you get one more D eight from your level? Uh, that's the D eight that says radiant on the. I got sword. you. Cool. Okay. Uh, fourteen twenty damage. He turns over to you and says. Why are you, uh, says you are all, uh, going to regret this. All right, Theron. All right, Theron is upset that the gnome got away. And he's going to take his frustration out on Ross Nisi. So he's going to point the, the two quicklings to attack Ross Nisi and, uh, Von, or Thorn whip him. So Thorn whip. And the quick lanes are going to go all out. Let's go quickling, family, go. Oh, these are... Hmm. 
Hmm? That crit damage is wrong. Saying you're rolling d4 plus 0. Oh, no, never mind, it's right. Okay. Very good. So let's see here. What do we got? One, two, three, four hits. And obviously, that's a max damage. So figure out the max on the damage, please, for me, Theron. It's six. Oh, seven, 16. 10. Plus 14. Well, it'd be 14. 24, 31. Fuck, 55. You guys are wrecking this guy. And he has an encounter you're supposed to have at 5th level or 6th level, and you're doing it at 11th level, but still. Yeah. Well, he could have ran away. He was he was leaving you alone! You guys are easily going to handle the aunties. He didn't well, have to come back. He could have just taken his blast and rolled. All I know is he said something, and Karen shot, or Karen said something back and shot. That's true. Uh, Theron, uh, you still have action for yourself, if you like. I used it. I probably missed. Oh, what'd you use it on? I missed all Thorn Whip. Yes, yeah, Thorn Whip. Whip. Did not hit. Eve. Everyone's ignoring the fact that you are over here exhausted, mm -hmm. desperately fighting this single UND. Yep. Because I can't see. And because oh, I can't you are over there. my tree. I I literally could not see Eve over there, like uh, with the dynamic. Nineteen. Uh, nineteen does uh, so fourteen damage. Uh, fourteen DC. Nineteen. DC damage. fourteen. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah. All right. He does. He is not able to dodge out of the way of that one. Uh, and that uh, bloodies him. I scooch into my bush. <coughs> That's what she said. Uh, Karen. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Karen will look over at Eve and be like, need, need a little help there? And then she will hex the Yuan T. Oh, no. She, she doesn't have any of those low level spell slots left, so she will not do that. It's fine. I got this guy. What's the worst you're going to do? I mean, potentially kill you, but you know, whatever. Uh, Karen will use a hit die to give herself advantage on the first Eldritch Blast because it would be a disadvantage because Rosnisi is within five feet. Um, and then she will be Eldritch Blasting Rosnisi. That didn't help for shit. All right, she's going to use another hit die because he's still within five feet. There we go. All right. And then she will also knock him back with repelling blast, and then she will not use a hit die on this one. All right. Very good. Ras Nisi has just a few hit points left, uh, and he is going to uh, curse all of you in the name of Dendar the Night Serpent. And he is going to cast. Get off here real quick. Yes, he is going to cast Circle of Death. Ooh, sounds so, promising. Everybody needs to give me a Constitution saving throw. Even Eve. Even Eve. Yes, this is the this is kill the whole town spell. It is a uh, sixty foot radius. Sweet. Ooh. Uh, disadvantage on Eve's check. We get to roll the four, but I'm not sure it'll help. And Ross needs your spell save is 16. Oh, God. Also, Karen technically gets the Mandard buff. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, plus my four, that will actually help. Yep. Huh. Are we still blessed? Karen rolls a 20. <laughs> You are, uh, how long does Bless last for? Hopefully long Bless, enough to say Bless an is, hour. Yeah, Bless is long yeah. gone. Bless was during the Aserac fight. Yeah, but how long, yeah. how long does Isn't it last for? Literally the thing we just did before that, I thought it lasted for like two hours. I have to go look. Hold on, I'm looking now. Never mind, it's really short. I do not have Bless. So I roll exactly a 16. Okay. okay. So do I die? 
Uh, did you roll a con save? Yes. Uh, yes, you did. I messed up here. Okay. Let's see. Theron is outside. It's what, a 15 foot radius on Mandred's thing? Aura? 10. Ten. I think Ten? so. Karen's the only one currently getting it. Yes, she is. Um, so, 20. Uh, I have not. I have rolled <laughs> shit on my spells damage. All the 8d6 rolled a 26. Okay, the uh, quicklings poof out of existence. Okay. Theron takes 26. Eve takes 26. The auntie takes 26. Actually, the auntie makes a save. Karen takes 13. Yanti makes a save, he takes 13. Ross Nisi's in the radius too, right? <laughs> no, it's centered on him. What's that? Uh, the quicklings get attack by two opportunities before they die. Why? Did he move? He was pushed. Uh, force yeah. movement does not affect and does oh, not affect okay. time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yuan T is going to keep whacking at Eve. Did Rosnisi kill himself with his own spell? Because that would have been excellent. No, he does. He 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 has. It is centered on him. It is not affected. It's centered on wherever you want it to be. Okay, it's centered. If he's within the range, he gets hit. At a point within the range. Oh, that is true. Uh, yes, he he willingly sacrificed himself. That, that's what I originally intended. Then I read it. I read it. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. spell. I've never I've never used that before. Did Although it's tough, for, it's tough for heroes because of the Yeah, he wasn't. He, he was only Early. bloodied, and he's he's magically resistant. Uh, Ross needs to only oh, have four yeah, hit yeah, points yeah. left. I forgot about the Yanti resistance as well. Gotcha. Uh, all right, you take another ten damage uh, from the bite, uh, Eve. Okay. Matters turn. Yep. Uh, Matters gonna bum rush this guy and swing for defenses. It's not Matters character sheet. All right, yep, they knock him prone. Doesn't really matter. Gonna hit either way. Uh, yes, and Mandred comes over and saves Eve. Uh, and you guys are complete. You want to know so something funny? funny? Hmm. Something like really, really funny. Eve's at one hit point. Nice. <laughs> Karen is at 33. So is Theron. But she's also completely immune to slashing damage, so. Well, to non-magical slashing damage, not to yeah. But yeah. So like when we got down to the last one, it was just a guy, and he like could uh, either bite you or hit you with a sword. It was like, mm. gotcha. Yeah, immune to slashing and piercing. So yeah, you guys have gotten yourselves out of the tomb. Uh, Ross Nisi has on him a flame tongue longsword, uh, and he has a some bracers of defense. Man, it's totally taking the sword. Well, that was fun. Where can I acquire uh, stuff to <laughs> do this teleportation fucking circle? Uh, probably I think I can help. Okay, sorry. We have gems from, like, inside. There were a few yeah, we gems don't really have the inks and stuff. I don't know what it would take to home brew uh, a set of inks and stuff to be able to do it but I would very much enjoy getting back to the entrance of the city and teleporting with the Statue of Rain. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I'm sorry we had to kind of bum rush through the end of the temple there, guys, but I enjoyed that we got to finish and fight Azarek and we didn't die. Yeah. I'm curious to see how... Uh how Pim and Karen will get on in the future as the now the two holders of the artifacts of Vecna. <laughs> yeah. 
I will be sure to include them on in campaigns where it fits in. Uh, <laughs> all of all of your NPCs may or may not be used again in the future. Um, right. As, as NPCs. Um, I mean, mine can't be a player character anymore. So. <laughs> All right, so Matt and Theron, uh, Matt and uh, Tyler, thank you so much for playing over the past couple years with me. Uh, for at least the time being, I'm going to step back from this Tuesday game because I work like I only have two nights off a week, and I use both of them to play D play D and D. With this group kind of uh, running out of steam, with a couple players leaving and now Hunter leaving, I'm going to step away from it for a bit. If I decide to pick up a game again, I'll be messaging you guys first off to play. Um, but I need to have a night a week to like socialize in real life with people. That's I don't blame you, man. No, absolutely understand. I uh, was getting to where I was going to have to dip out too because staying up till 12 and trying to get up to work in the morning is not working for me anymore. So all right. it's all good. Cool. And if a spot opens up on my Saturday game, I'll of course reach out to you guys as well. I just did not fancy the thought of like starting something new with new players and trying to make it, you know, into the group together again so but uh, yeah, I've, totally I've, had a, I've had a lot of fun playing with you guys thank you so much for sticking around uh, i hope you've enjoyed yourselves as well yeah uh, and the three back to back to back campaigns was was more than i expected out of a random reddit group oh yeah yeah, yeah right i was there for two of them but yeah well, you joined up in uh in prince of the apocalypse yeah you, we oh yeah we did Prince. Okay, yeah, you guys did Lost Minds. So you guys did four together. Shoot. Okay. Me and, me and Tyler. I mean, that was Lost Minds went right into Princes. We, it was the same. This was a kid continuation. Yeah. And honestly, the, from, from my experience, like having run three of the adventures now, I think Lost Minds into Prince of the Apocalypse is the most fun I had personally. I think, I think it's the best, the most. I, I just like the experience most. Like, it's like this dungeon delving, but there's also role play opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, um, like the Earth Temple. Yeah. Oh, God, the Earth Temple. Um, I've found that Lost Minds leads right into the beginning of both Princes and Storm King's Thunder pretty well if you do them both right. Uh, but I liked both of those because there was big dungeon delves, but also you could go back to town and, and party and do whatever. Um, having an old school hex crawl thing is something I've wanted to do for a long while, but... Uh, both this adventure and the Star Wars adventure I was running uh, were both very much like in the middle of nowhere jungle games and it just kind of sucks to be like slogging through stuff but never like you never go back to town you never buy new gear like so much yeah. of the stuff that the characters have we started with out of that port where we had no money to hire the guides or, or anything else we were forced to get Mushari because we owed him a favor <laughs> and, and he died yeah and we're like <laughs> I got a new character, so not necessarily Eve, but many of the characters are still stomping around in their starting gear at level 11. See, there's an old school guy. I kind of like that. Like, I don't... Like, I think that people level up too quickly in 5th edition. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, the power, but I think the power just scales too quick. I would rather, like, slow down the leveling up just a little bit and allow more time to, like, acquire stuff almost. Uh, yeah. instead of just like you go into a dungeon and you come out and you're level 10 and you have all of the magical shit like yeah. there there should be a couple more like going back to town and turning in quests and stuff in between I'm a level 1 who just arrived at Port Nanzaru and I'm a level 10 like, yeah there there are a couple of like towns in the jungle you guys just never found them on this run yeah I still bump into people that's like, oh, you're near the end of Tomb Annihilation? Well, how did you like blank NPC? And I'm like, what? Yeah. And yeah. I'm, you know, the big Yonti goddess lady. And I'm like, no. Like, what? Ross, <laughs> Ross Nisi? There's a Yonti like, goddess? <laughs> apparently. Apparently, we took the back door and did the Hydra thing and went straight to Ross Nisi, but there's some other lady in there that was like super had her own thing. And I have oh, no there's, idea. Oh, there's, there's, there's a priestess, yeah, that's in there that if you go a different way, you might encounter. Um, neither group encountered her. I was kind of wondering what you're talking about myself, but yeah. And there's like, uh, if you go to the, if you, there's one of the, one of the, uh, the guides is a were tiger, and there's a clan of were tigers that you can kind of interact with. And she leads you to like some pterodactyl people uh, and some aracocra. Um, and of course, you could have gone and 
dealt with the mine with uh, your guide first. It was on the way. Uh, and then would have found it. And then he would have a carrot. Oh, yeah. It was not yeah. on the way, and we had magical STD person that brought us here because we that's kept well, trying to go back to the mine, and she had migraines. Yeah, I mean it was on the way in that in that it was south, and you were heading south. Uh, but yeah, if you didn't, that that is the case as well. We also uh, got told about the bird people who inhabited the mon- monastery who kidnapped the heir of Schult. Yeah, which we which we kind of ignored as well. Yep, yeah, exactly. So I mean, there's lo- there's lots of stuff in the jungle you guys just yeah. never encountered. That's that's one thing I do like is that there's enough in the hex that like. The oh, one yeah. thing that I can say about all of the 5th edition modules I've played so far is that there's enough stuff in there that you can have groups that do almost the same thing, but, like, not at all. Like, even the starter set, some groups don't go do the orcs or, or do X, Y, or Z. Like, you can go to just beating up goblins until you find out where the castle is, or you can go to Thunder Tree and do the druid. Like, there's, there's oh, yeah. alternate That's the paths. best part about D&D, is that there's, like, because it's based on people's brains, it is, like, very much... Yeah. What and... we, what Good. No, I was just gonna say, on top of the different people and the dice always having a outcome differentiating, you know, it, it's a different outcome because of random chance they've written enough paths into all of the 5e modules I've played so far that you don't feel railroaded and you can finish and go back and be like, what? There was a, a what in the jungle? And yeah. like, that's not even counting, like look at Storm King Thunder with that big open, like just wander around phase. We had five or six different temples we could have gone to and we, we went to one and it was 12 weeks yeah. of our lives. <laughs> Well, that's right. only because that's only because Matt fucked up. But the, uh, <laughs> no, I like Storm King's Thunder. There's so, like the whole middle portion of Storm King's Thunder is great for like I need an encounter because I didn't plan today. Let me just go pick something random out of here. Yeah. It's great for that. It's, I, it, the book is not put together well, but you guys, there is so much shit in Storm King's Thunder you guys didn't even get close to within a thousand miles of. Yeah. So. <laughs> And now that I've done Storm Kings, I kind of want to just keep the book around so that if I'm ever doing anything in Forgotten Realms, basically have the events of Storm King's Thunder happening in the background that the party does not necessarily know about, but have that as like my world clock almost. And anytime they end up in this place, okay, well, let me flip to that middle section of the book and be like, this thing is happening. Fork beard, the dwarven fucking bandit. I think you could run Storm King's Thunder, and I've only played part of it, I haven't read it, but I think if you took Storm King's Thunder and uh, the first one, the dragon one, the dragon books. Or or the Dragon Queen. And, yeah, uh, and Rise of, Rise of Tiamat. I think I think if you combine that with Rise of Tiamat with that and like put them together, like because I know Rise of Tiamat, the plot doesn't really work together very well, and Storm King's Thunder, like the, the, uh, the whole thing with the dragon at the end, it is kind of thrown out. There's no like foreshadowing or anything. So I think if you threw them together, because the they reference each other anyway, so Storm King's Thunder references yeah. uh, Rise of Tiamat. I think it would be a much more cohesive thing. It would take you almost a 20. My biggest gripe about Storm King Thunder is it's a, it, you know, it took us, what, 35 three-hour sessions? So it's, you know, a 25 to 30 week-long endeavor, and you get to the end, and the final boss is not giants. You're dealing with giants and stuff this whole time, and you've once or twice heard about this dragon, but, like, there's no build up to it being a giant fucking dragon fight. It's yeah. it's giants the whole time and yeah the giants you know ordning is thrown out of order and stuff and and whatnot but like there is there's no breadcrumbs that lead you up to caring about that dragon. You just you get the giant buffs and you go punch the shit out of a dragon in the desert and you're like, "Okay." Yeah, it felt very JRPG. Like where you beat the final boss and they're like, yeah. but wait, but this wait. was pulling the strings the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's 50 feet tall and they all join forces and you go, okay. But yeah, I had fun and I appreciate you running stuff for like, what's this been, two and a half years now? Yeah, going on three yeah. years with Tyler. Yeah. Man, it's, can't believe it's been that long. And uh, I will be trying to run stuff maybe when I get back from having fun times but I don't know what time zone or country I'll be in uh, but I will definitely reach out to folks I have played with before heading to the online messes so um, 
Yeah, friend me on Discord and stuff. Nice. And stay safe. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I won't get into it since I'm technically still streaming, but there are safer yeah. places to be. Also, if anyone has a Switch, the Daemon X Machina demo just came out. What? I need new stuff to do on Switch. Daemon oh, X Machina I... demo is lots of fun. What? What is it? It's called Daemon X Machina. Like it's like demon, but D A E. Hmm. You know, like yeah, Golden Compass. A, yeah, yeah, it's a mech. It's a mech combat game. Wow. Uh, I was excited because I was scrolling through Steam the other day, and uh, I just I noticed that uh, Paradox is coming out with a Roam simulator. And it's like, that's what I need in my life, is I need to play Crusader Kings instead of Ancient Rome. And I stopped, and I thought, wait, that is exactly what I need in my life. So I'm sure I'll be getting that when it comes out. <laughs> Unrelated, I'm oh, going to go ahead Kings. and kill the stream and recording here. All right, cool. So Crusader thanks for Kings all the people that watched this shit for three years. <laughs>